Normally, I don't read Breitbart. I just read The Guardian and the BBC. I swear. I swear to Corbin. I swear. I'm a good boy. I do not commit heresy by reading other websites. But um, this one in particular was interesting to me because uh, I did a follow-up to a poem uh, that no one asked for the BBC to release, yet they did. And because people uh, reacted negatively to it, uh, they looked upon the peasantry uh, and said, how dare these people? How dare they criticize our editorialism and our choice in programming? Uh, and as such, they reported them. But not only did they report them, they decided to virtue signal about reporting them. It's like, look how good we are as a company that we take it upon our hands to clean society from this filth that is posting in our comment sections. Now, I personally did a video about uh, the poem in which I think uh, in an incredibly, incredibly respectful manner, uh, I explained that uh, I, as a person that has difficulty putting food on the table, uh, do not care about the struggles and the plights of a wealthy person who has the money to afford going to a London salon. Like, when you go shopping and you need a piece of paper in order to make the calculations and you look towards the fire exit so that if at the cashier you cannot pay, you can make a run for it so you can escape the shame and the embarrassment. Uh, problems like someone not wanting, not wanting to go to a salon because they think they don't fit uh, are problems that you wish you would have. It's like, let's exchange problems. I, I will give you my problems and you give me yours. And, and I think that would make as an excellent, an excellent bargain. I, I can give you millions of Romanians that would want to live in London and that their life plight would be that they cannot go and get a haircut. Not because they don't afford it, uh, but because they don't feel like they belong in the salon or they don't feel like they... So many Romanians would take this deal. So many. So many. Uh, but... Apparently, uh, the BBC has decided to warn people uh, that were critical about the non-binary haircuts. Now, it would be interesting if the BBC would actually make a survey to see how many people believe that non-binary is a thing. I mean, I know that transgenderism is a thing. I, I, I did go to med school. I study it. I, I, I am aware that it is a condition. But never in my med school books have I managed to learn about non-binary. Now, maybe it is a thing and the overwhelming amount of uh, people in the population do believe it's a thing. But until we make a survey, we don't know because I want to know how many criminals, how many thought criminals are in society? How many people should also be reported? Uh, and number two, <clears throat> I generally do not believe in non-binary. I do not believe it. I, I am a thought criminal. Luckily, I don't live in Britain, so they can't call the cops on me. Uh, now, but the, what the social sciences think, I don't care what the social scientists think. I legitimately don't. Why do I care about what plumbers think about skin cancer? When the doctors are going to come up and they're going to tell me, you know, about this non-binary thing, then that's going to be a different conversation. But why, why do I care about what social scientists think? Unless you're suffering from Klinefelter or Turner syndrome, or some other uh, genetical disabilities that would classify you as intersex, uh, then you're either male or female as a biological sex. And I generally do not care about gender. Or I, I, I legitimately do not care. Now, if you want to identify something and you want to live your life based to your own values and your own beliefs, that's fine. But can you, can you leave my own values and beliefs alone? Like, do not project yourself upon me and force me to, to think that, no, uh, Non-binary is a thing, and we now need to have like salons that only treat non-binary people. It's like, okay, well, create your salon. Create your salon, because if I am a person that's a hairstylist, which is already a person that doesn't earn a lot, to be honest. It's, it's not a very wealthy person. It's not the, the creme de la creme of society. It's not the 1%, all right? And you want to lecture those people uh, for not having their business to accommodate you. Well, create your own business then. Create your own. And, and if, if there are so many people that require your services, maybe you can be the creme de la creme and make a lot of money, you know? So this is what, what annoys me. It's to, to see rich people, white rich people, this is how I understand the BBC likes to put it, white rich people on television lecturing people that aren't as rich as them about oppression. Can we stop that? Like, can you, can you, uh, like, I, I don't mind that you're rich, you know, unlike other people on the BBC that have the hammer and sickle. I, I don't mind that you're rich, you know, good for you. If you're wealthy, 
Good job. More power to you. However, with that said, can you please stop lecturing the poor people? Can, can, can we have that at least? Can we? Uh? But anyway, right. So apparently uh, the BBC didn't like that uh, people didn't uh, clap or do jazz hands. By the way, I generally uh, looked at a thing. So at universities, you're not allowed to clap anymore, right? They say that clapping is triggering. So you should do jazz hands instead. And I generally like thought like, why on earth is this a thing? Like, cause, cause you don't hear it anywhere else in the world. Just like you don't hear non-binary, you know, in, in non-European or English speaking places. You, you don't hear about non-binary in China. You know, you don't hear about non-binary in Saudi Arabia. It's, it's just like it's just a white thing, a, wh a white people problem as they like to call it. Uh, so, so here's my thing, right? Why is it with jazz hands? Because again, you don't find them anywhere else in the world. Like every time it's something that you don't find in other places or throughout history, uh, in overwhelming amounts, and it's like just one or two places, then you, you have to ask yourself, why is it? And it came to me. And then I asked someone at a university, who I know, that's a professor, and he confirmed my theory. Do you see how smart I am? I, I can just figure out complicated things on my own. So apparently you would have like a Marxist spew communism at a university and very few people would clap for them. And then you'd have like someone else, a different speaker that wasn't even like right wing. It was still a leftist, but at least it wouldn't try to say that he, it's good to steal your shit. And then people would give him thunderous applause and clap, right? So you'd have like this the, um, disparaging thing between uh, people that were saying nonsense and no one would clap. And then people that were just normal people and you'd have like thunderous applause. So that's why they removed jazz hands, because if the social justice activists would also receive thunderous applause, then they would be happy with the clapping. So that's why they, they reverted to jazz hands. The more you know, right? Ah, oh, see? But anyway, so the BBC uh, decided to have this thing where a person describes how awful it is to have to choose between the salon or the barber. So, so this is like what tells me that this is a wealthy person. Uh, when I was poor, and I'm not rich now, but I'm not poor either. I'm like somewhere in between. But I still can't afford to go to a salon in London to make my hair. Like that, that is just a sign that you are a wealthy person. When, when I want to get my hair cut, I do not go to the salon and I do not go to the barber. I go into the neighborhood where there is this old man that does haircut for both genders. It's like a unisex, you know, he, he's got like this, this little room with a little chair and a little bench behind where two or three other people can, can sit and wait. And that's the person that I go to. Why? Because it's very cheap. It's really cheap. And even if it wasn't cheap, <clears throat> it's still like I, I would rather give him money than to a multi-million dollar corporation that, that has set up shop in London. You know, I like to help the little guy. I, I, I like to help the, the mom and pop shop if it's uh, not too evil of me. Because huh? I, I noticed that a lot of people that are woke nowadays all have iPhones. Every single one of them, and, and it's like, I understand that if you live in a society, you need to have a smartphone. Like, perfectly reasonable. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, you're, you're a communist, why do you have a smartphone? No, no, no. But why an iPhone? Like, why the brand? Why, why can't you get a Samsung instead? You know, why, why can't you get something cheaper? Why, why is it that all of these people that, that are for social justice and they're against the 1%, they, they just buy brand things. They, they buy things for corporations. They buy things that are brand and expensive. Why is it? Because you have to ask at one point. So anyway, let's look at some of these evil comments that they got. I didn't even know that BBC has a um, comment section, but I guess they got them on Twitter. Uh, we're queer and we're here and life can be tough out there. So do you have to make a fuss or could you just cut your fucking hair? Like someone else made the poem, you know, uh, horrible. Abs I disavow. How, how dare you? Do you do not understand the plight of having to cut someone's hair. Not to mention, like, if you're, if you're really <clears throat> into the problem that you can't find someone else to cut it, why, why don't you cut it yourself? Why don't you cut it yourself? Like, you, you just buy uh, one of those, uh, whatever they call it, just, you know? Uh, I'm sure you've seen the signs, gents trim five quid, women trim nine. As usual, there will always be a higher price to pay for those who are female. Yeah, so uh, I, I know I explained why women have to pay more. And it's also interesting when you go to these salons where women have to pay more. Most of the people cutting hair are women. So women overcharge other women. And it's somehow men's fault. I, I, I do not understand. Like I legitimately don't understand. And the reason for this 
is that when men want a haircut, they just want like the cheapest and the fastest haircut possible. That's that's like me and that's my friends. You know, I want a haircut. Just come on, hurry up. Just, where, where can I get one? Where can I get one cheap? Now, when my girlfriend wants a haircut, well, she doesn't want the cheapest. She wants where where is the place that gives the best haircut in this area? And she wants recommendations, so she has standards. Well, standards cost money. And then it's also about the size of the hair. I mean, there, there's more shampoo, there's more time that's being spent, so on and so forth. And again, if, if women wouldn't put up with this, like I don't need a social scientist to tell me what women think. If women wouldn't like it, they would just go to the same place that I go, to that barber that has like one chair, and you pay $10 and he gives you a haircut. So if all the women would do that, because I'm sure that it's not just one guy, there's more guys throughout the neighborhoods, right? Especially the impoverished neighborhoods, if you go, you're going to find very cheap hairstylists. Uh, then this wouldn't be a problem. Like all these salons would have to change prices or go out of a business. But since women put up with it, how is it the men's fault? Like, what do you want me to do? Tell my girlfriend not to go? Like, you know, stop her? It's like, oh, no, you're not allowed to go to the salon because you're contributing to feminine oppression. But anyway, right, so um, <clears throat> let's see the, the horrible comments that this person got. Apparently, it's, it's bullying. And by the way, just so we understand, I'm not for bullying, but when bullying in Britain means a TV anchor quoting Shakespeare to a black man, and because of that, he gets fired. I'm starting to think that your definition of bullying it might not be the same that the rest of the human population has. So when you say bullying, are we talking about like quoting Shakespeare to a black man type of bullying? Or are we talking about like three guys pinning, you know, a, a younger gentleman down and starting to punch him? Like which, which type of bullying are we talking about? Because now I need to know. Is it like the comment section version of bullying or is it like someone getting his lunch money stolen? Because the distinction is very important. You know, some cases are serious, uh, other cases are what mental disabled people like to talk about in the asylum. I mean, it, it, again, like we are at the point where a TV anchor quoting Shakespeare to a black man is worthy of the TV anchor getting fired. Like that, that is the line now. That, that is where we're at. You know, a man making a joke with a pug is now national headlines. That's that. that like, so so I, I, I'm, I'm now skeptical when it comes to words. I, I, I do not trust words anymore. It's like bullying and harassment. Okay, well, can you actually tell me what happened? Because from what I see here, it seems that the BBC got the bullying and harassment, not the, 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 the person that's being uh, the one doing the poem. And people are saying this is why the license fee, uh, people wonder why the license fee is resented. Remarked author and commentator Peter Lloyd, referring to the compulsory license poll tax, which all people who watch live television are required to fund the BBC. Which, by the way, is a poor tax. It's a tax on the poor people, because anyone has to pay it, right? And the majority of the population, I understand from the rhetoric of these enlightened uh, mainstream media outlets, is that the majority of people are poor. So poor people have to pay the BBC tax. So that other people at the BBC can gorge themselves on Royal Chateau and bring their dog to, to expensive places. Project Panodrama. I don't think I've uh, seen such a lot of rubbish from the BBC for about five minutes, said another reviewer. Uh, previous generation, feel your struggle. Especially the people who landed on D-Day. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and then you have like BBC Social. It's been a tough 24 hours here fighting hate from all around the world. Well, maybe don't troll people. Did you think of that? Like, try not to troll people so you don't get hate. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, you know, if, if I am not the type of Buddhist monk that has managed to drink the lotus flower so that nothing can upset him anymore. That you can drive to traffic and someone gets in front of you at the intersection and you don't feel the need to hang that shit. Like, hang, hang, hang. You know, like, I, I, I'm sorry. You know, every now and then I get angry. And one of the things that managed to upset me is when I see a rich person lecturing poor people. That's that's something that, I don't know how, how much anger is it. Like, does it matter? It's like if, if you could measure angers on, on decimeters. And it's like, well, it's just one decimeter worth of anger versus like 10,000. You know, like, is, is it acceptable? Like, is, is, is some outrage required? I mean, it wasn't angry to the point where I would go like, Ugh. no, it was like more of a type of angry. You know, this is, this is unacceptable. That, that, that's that's the level of anger that I got. You know, I, I was a little bit like. Uh, so we have take we we take threats and bullying very seriously here at the social, and we have been reporting those tweets. 
Hashtag be kind. Now, they don't actually show what tweets they reported, uh, but I don't want to be kind. I, I mean, if I was a British person, I would pay you money. I'm not a British person, so I get to see your ads. You're a company. You're, you're offering a product, okay? You're not my family. You're not my friends. Uh, you're not my buddy buddies. I, I don't have to be kind to you, okay? I can be indignated. Word of the day. See, I'm not angry. I am indignated. I am offended. Oh my God. Best part. Did, did you notice this, by the way? Like, I, I noticed this, and it's very interesting. Again, like the word manipulation that these people are doing on, on the media is just mwah. When right wingers are upset, or that's not right wingers. When non far leftists are upset, so we include left leaning people here, we include the centrists, we include the right, and we include the far. So, so everyone but the far left, all right? When they get upset on something, it's they are angry. They are angry. But, but when the far left gets angry, it's they are offended. And, and I, I always thought, like, why is it? Because you notice it. Like, when you have a job like mine and you go through the articles, and it's like article after article after article, you realize that the reason they do this is like a dog whistle. Offended means shut it down. Means deplatform. Means, like, start, start contacting their ad revenue. Just, just, just shut it down. That's offended. Angry means that the person shouldn't have been angry. So, for example, the the person that appeared on British television uh, asking a question about immigration, and now you have like entire far right groups trying to dox her, trying to get her fired. That is offended. They they got offended by that. So so it's not that they are bad people, and what they're doing isn't bullying. It's not harassment, even though like it affects you. I mean, mean words on the internet, you can just shut it down. You know, you can just turn it off. You don't, you don't have to be on Twitter. But when some are like activists, like people with an ideological agenda are trying to get you fired so they get like brownie points in their click, that is fine. That is perfectly acceptable. It's not even against Twitter's terms of service. Uh, <clears throat> it's not clear whether the corporation was referring to merely reporting critical replies to Twitter or to law enforcement. With British police having proven uh, rather gung ho about pursuing people for mean tweets. Again, yeah, uh, the British police actually went to someone's place of work because of mean tweets online. Like just, just let that. So, and a judge found that that was illegal. So the British cops broke the law by going to someone's workplace in order to intimidate them to stop tweeting. I'm glad I don't live in Britain, to be honest. It seems like a very oppressive country. It reminds me of the the, the fascists from my day. I don't think even the fascists from my day were that brutal. Like the Iron Garden. No, no, no. The, the Romanian Iron Garden. I, I don't think they were like that. But it's interesting to see. Maybe the Brits studied them and, and worked. You know, like kept building on the foundation. The police, Scotland Force in particular, is known to keep a database of people accused of so-called non-crime hate. So the police is now policing non-crimes. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that like, again, it reminds me of Securitate. Uh, the secret police of Romania during the communism. Very good. Uh, they, they managed to maintain moral purity in society. Including offensive jokes. Uh, whether there is any evidence of identifying the hate crime of those incidents. So, yeah. Uh, just uh, just so you know what, what goes on and, and why people hate the BBC and, and they don't want to pay license to it. Because here's the thing. like They take your body regardless if you agree or not agree with their programming. Because at least if it's like in the private sector... Well, you don't like it, you change the channel. You know, you change the channel and then they realize, holy shit, our viewership dropped, so we need to say about, talk about something that interests the people. But what they do here is that they take your money, they take your hard earned money, like some guy goes into the factory, works 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day, and from his hard earned money, he has to pay the people at the BBC so that they can push this garbage. And when that same guy complains and goes like, look, I, I, I think you're... you're your article is shite. I, I don't like it. I, I think it's bad. Then they get to report you. Isn't that interesting? Wow. Holy shit. I, I, the, the audacity on these people. And what I love the most. What I love the most is that when there is actually a conversation about removing the license fee, instead of them at least trying to act positive and put on a good PR and put on a good image for the public, no, they double down. You know, maybe maybe I would be surprised if they make an article about me, like uh, uh, Eastern European person compared us with the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 